It's the middle of the week, wake up! tell y'all that I will be here to give y'all summer bops, okay? Gay summer bops, you know what I'm talking about? Pride month summer bops. What my God, get into it! Extinction is now on Apple Music, it's on Spotify, it's on, let me tell you something, it's on iTunes, it's on Tidal, it's on SoundCloud, it's on, you can see it on YouTube, bro. It's everywhere where you get your music, make sure that you go. The link is in my description in the first comment, make sure that you go and check it out. I'm excited. I want to see y'all dancing to it. I want to see y'all twerking to it. Please send me send me as many videos as you want to. I want to see if I can repost them and shit. I don't know. Just get your life, get into it. Tell me what you think about it. So some of y'all have already heard the whole project and I'm so happy about it. A lot of y'all have been fucking with Fuck Your Father. One of my favorites ever. I'm sure you guys have heard it. I've had this song for like years, but I just redid it. It's basically a 2.0. I'm glad y'all like it. What I thought was so funny was Miles J went and requested it at this bar. And I was just like, thank you so much, sis. Thanks playing your song in the club, girl. Yes. We in here. Miles J in the club. <laughs> <laughs> All the support from everyone has been so, like, really sweet. <laughs> like, it's been so amazing. Thank you so, 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 so much. Also, patreon.com slash Adrian Expression. There is voting going on about the theme of the article that I will be writing about on Thursday. So make sure if you want to put your two cents in, go over there, sign up, check it out. We are here to spill a little bit of librarian Adrian Expression clearance rack crop top type of tea. So let's get into it. All right, so since we're on the topic of music, the big thing that's popping in the music industry is Cardi B released this press video and it scalped me. <laughs> like, it scalped me. And one of the main reasons why it scalped me is, is, well, the first one is just because I wasn't really feeling press as much as I felt her other shit. So when she came out with this video, it's like, no, you're gonna like press. <laughs> and the second reason why I was very impressed is because after I went on social media, I found out that she was a director on it. I mean, she went into detail about how she had a vision for it, how she wanted her hair and eyebrows white, and how she wanted to be naked, but of course not really, and she said her team, her glam team, made sure that that shit was possible. I don't know, it was really good, like, the visuals was cute. Sis, sis was out here going to all types of prison. Sis had all types of dead bodies around her. Sis drowned somebody in a toilet. I was just like, when it comes to visually, when it comes to performance-wise, Cardi B knows what the hell she's doing. She, that's it. So I'm gonna try and be as short and sweet as possible in the first part of this video because we have a lot of political stuff to talk about, but I just wanted to let you guys know that I did end up watching um, this ep this week's episode of Pose and it was so good. I'll talk about two things really quickly. The first thing, I like that they're uh, taking a realistic angle when it comes to this Angel and Poppy relationship because a lot of us, a lot of the audience is shipping them together and a lot of times it will just be fan service and they'll get rid of it, but they're actually diving into what a relationship like this would actually look like. Um, and of course, Poppy feels left out because Angel's doing all this stuff. Rightfully so, Angel like did not show up to the to dinner that they had planned, but you can tell that Poppy is super mature and someone who actually really, based off of what he does and says, someone who actually really wants Angel to succeed, even if that comes at a cost to whatever they think they have going on. And that's how you know when someone actually really cares about you. But Angel, I think she I think she sees what he's trying to say, but when that little kiss at the end, to me, shows that she really does not understand how deep <laughs> He actually likes her, in my opinion. But you you can tell me what you think about that situation. Um, but the second situation I like was, the whole thing with Electra was hilarious. I don't know why she's praying over that body, but I mean, we're gonna keep it moving. I like how Electra and Blanca met up together and were just like, at the end of the day, you're still my mother, I'm still your daughter. And Electra was like, we can fight all we want, but when someone from the outside starts attacking us, that we come together, like the true army that we are. And I think it parallels to how the LGBT is, or sh you know, should be. <laughs> Pose as usual was really good. I need to watch Euphoria, my mind has to be in a good place. <laughs> to, to watch that, but I'll definitely be watching that episode later this week. So I don't know really how to talk about this situation, probably because every time a Kardashian springs across my uh, timeline, you know, every time I see it in the headline, my whole body, my spirit and soul, it just sighs. It lets out a deep, heavy, Negro spiritual weight in the water. Built that sigh, you see what I'm saying? And I better not sing that song too loud, because sis might go ahead and steal that and try to sell it back to us like she wrote it. Uh, Kim, they are dragging you for this kimono. <laughs> 
Kim, they are dragging you for this kimono thing that you have going on. Apparently, you made this whole body wear, shape wear, underwear type line, and you calling it kimono. And people, especially Japanese people, are, I mean, tearing your ass a new one online. Now, like I said, you so confused, you don't know what your message is. One day, you trying to go to somebody's white house. Oh my God, black reform and get these niggas out of jail. The next day, you stealing somebody else's because it's just like, what do you, just pick one message and stick with it, sis. Oh my God. Like I said, I know a good marketing scheme. When I see one, you're gonna get all these people to talk about the line and they're inevitably gonna go check it out. Your fans are gonna buy it regardless because they don't give a fuck about any of this shit that we're talking about. But I just want people to understand what I'm saying that no matter how much Kim Kardashian to me in my eyes, no matter how much she kisses ass, things like this that she does over and over and acts like there's not a big ass Google sitting right in front of her rich ass fingertips, I will always cite things like this that she does to let y'all know why I continue not to trust her ass. So I don't wanna hear any bullshit. I don't don't trust sis. And it seems like Eric Trump won't be trusting any more bartenders in Chicago. <laughs> ah, apparently Eric Trump was at some bar in Chicago. Uh, y'all, I think it's Chicago. And he said, girl, he told Breitbart News, he made a whole statement saying somebody spit on me, girl. <laughs> girl, let me read what he said. Let's just, it is a purely disgusting act. Hold on, I gotta do my looks like this a little bit. You see it? Okay. It was a purely disgusting act by somebody who clearly has emotional problems. For a party that preaches tolerance, this is once a, this once again just demonstrates they have very little civility. When somebody is sick enough to resort to spitting on someone, it just emphasizes a sickness and desperation and the fact that we're winning. Ooh, girl, I almost felt like a ventriloquist. I don't know how y'all talk like that. Anyway. Uh, I don't know why you're so pressed, girl. It was just a little bit of liquid. It's the, I mean, since you are ordering liquid at the bar, sis, it's okay. It's, it's some lands on your face. You'll be okay, sis. What's not okay is these children in these camps. So, uh, what, what are we going to do? But I don't can't give a fuck about your ass getting spat on. Just like all the policies of this administration needs to be spat on. You'll be okay, sis. But who will not be okay are these children in these uh, camps. So let me go ahead and put up this picture. Apparently, these are people, human beings. These are human beings sleeping with a damn, a, what is it, aluminum? Look like damn foil they got them in. Um, and the details that's coming out, these lights are always on, okay? And even when they're supposed to be going to sleep, I don't know how you can sleep in an environment like that, um, but even when they're supposed to be going to sleep, the lights are still on. Let's let's go ahead and move on to Miss Sarah Fabian, who is a lawyer in the Justice Department, who, who spoke about this. She had a whole hearing in front of the Court of Appeals in the Ninth Circuit. Since, I mean, these judges, were, they're like, what are you talking about? Because the whole thing is that these detention centers are supposed to be safe and sanitary. That's the language that that they use. So this lawyer, it looks like her and Sarah Huckleberry Finn and Sanders could be uh, sisters. Uh, Miss Sister Fabian. Let's call her Sister Fabian. Her name is Sarah Fabian. Let's call her Sister Fabian. Sister Fabian went up on there as a whole ass grown ass woman. As a whole ass grown ass lawyer for the Justice Department. I mean, somebody with cognitive function that is supposed to be at least near 100 goddamn percent. Sis really went up there and said, you know, argued the semantics of the words safe and sanitary. Sis talking about, I mean, these people People with that concerns with them not getting tooth toothpaste, <laughs> soap, not even be able to shower, and we ain't gonna talk about what happens to LGBT people in there, and most likely they're gonna be brown. You know, safe and sanitary. Sis went up there and said, "Well, basically, you know what? We technically they got everything that they human humans need to breathe air. Essentially, this what you could go look at what she said exactly. I'm doing some gay paraphrasing over here. Sis, sis said, you know what? Well, we can argue the word safe and sanitary. Well, they have this, they have that. It's okay if they don't have this. It's just like sis, they, like we toothbrushes. What? <laughs> the sleeping under aluminum." Like, what are you talking about, okay? So when Eric Trump goes to these Chicago bars and gets spit on, do you think I give a fuck about that shit? I promise you that I don't. There has been this whole movement going on at this Wayfair walkout. Wayfair is the company that, I guess, the government has ordered furniture for these camps from Wayfair. And these people were just like, no, girl, we're going to walk out. They did a whole protest, but the, the CEO was just like, sis, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna fulfill the shit anyway, so it doesn't matter what y'all hoes do. We're going to make sure that we fulfill these orders. And, of course, uh, the Trump campaign ended up coming out with a statement
statements saying, well, essentially, y'all don't want these kids to have furniture or beds. To so grossly miss the point and to do it on purpose is just gaslighting at that point and propaganda. We don't want these centers to even exist because we know how y'all, we know how y'all do. We've been through it multiple times. We're going through it every day. Y'all do y'all own citizens so fucked up in these jails. Can you imagine what they're doing in the detention centers? It's just get out of here. You could have put all the money that you put into creating these cages into fixing this immigration system, making sure that these hubs are properly staffed, removing your meddling into these countries uh, so their situations don't worsen and they end up creating more refugees, the same ones that you're either sending away, uh, separating from their parents or locking the fuck up. It's just use critical thinking skills, girl. Someone else who I want to use critical thinking skills is Megan goddamn McCain. You know what? I'm going to call her Maria McCain, okay? Santa Maria was the name of one of Christopher Columbus's ships and that's why I'm going to call her Maria McCain, okay? Because she does just like Christopher Columbus, except she does it with cable TV. She colonizes the airwaves anytime she opens her mouth on one of these shows. I'm tired of it. So this is what Maria McCain had to say about these detention facilities. My father couldn't lift me above his head as a child because, and you knew it was going to start with her father. <laughs> But sadly, it didn't end with her father. Let's keep it moving. My father couldn't lift me above his head as a child because of his torture wounds. So she was just like, please, we need to be careful of using hyperbole. These places are not torture centers. Let me tell you something, sis. Let me tell you something. If a knife was used to kill my ass, guess what it would be called? The murder weapon. So it's cool that you call it the butter knife, or if you know what I mean? it's cool that you call it the steak knife. But in the investigation, guess what it would be called, boo? Guess what we call it? The murder weapon. Since if torture is going on in these camps, then guess what we're gonna call it? We're either gonna call it a concentration camp or we're gonna call it a torture camp. It doesn't matter the fucking semantics. That's the same reason I dragged Sister Fabian earlier on. Same reason I'm dragging Eric Trump. That's the same reason I dragged some of these people talking about that one soccer player. Who I forget her name, but she was just like, I'm not going to the fucking White House, they're dragging her for using strong language. It's just like, what type of language does your leader Trump use? It, it's just, we know y'all don't give a fuck about minorities. Just say it with your chest. Just say it with your chest. Now, Elijah Cummings is saying, Kellyanne Conway, get your ass in here with his chest. <laughs> okay? So the House Oversight Committee today addressed those concerns that the OSC, the Office of the Special Counsel, brought up when it comes to Kellyanne Conway and her repeated violations of the Hatch Act. The Hatch Act is something that prevents federal employees from making partisan claims, tearing down people in part parties, basically understanding that these federal employees are getting paid tax dollars and taxpayers aren't paying for no goddamn campaign. You know what I mean? They're paying for you to do your federal job in that situation. But after she was repeatedly notified of her repeated uh, Hatch Act, they said repeated and flagrant Hatch Act violations, uh, Kellyanne Con Elijah said Kellyanne Conway was just up there talking about blah, blah, blah. Just tell me when my jail date starts. Essentially like, girl, I'm going to keep doing it no matter what. So he was, <laughs> Elijah had said period more than one time and I just, I I, I could not help but laugh every single time he said, period. We gonna get the girl in here, period. So the White House is over here trying to claim that the Hatch Act does not apply and she has immunity. Uh, to, it's just like, girl, they didn't even, they skipped over all that bullshit. We're just like, girl, here are her violations and what are we gonna do about it? They voted to subpoena the good sis. So basically what they've done, like I said, is voted on that subpoena to compel Kellyanne Conway to give testimony since she refused to come to these hearings voluntarily. So we can only hope that the evil queen from Snow White will end up going. My my hope and dream is that they get her spooky episode of Scooby-Doo built ass on up out of here, okay? So Matthew Knowles made some people angry with some of the comments that he made on Tuesday on Sirius XM Urban View. That's with Clay Kane, who I think is really cool. Now, my initial reaction to this headline was to roll my eyes because in my opinion, I think Matthew Knowles says a lot of things sometimes that are, first of all, unnecessary. Second of all, to get more attention or to sell Destiny's Child memorabilia, I thought I was like, oh girl. So I was fully prepared to drag, but I did my research. So this is one of the big chunks of what he said. He was speaking facts about the music industry. He was asked about it. He talked about the divisions when it comes to hip-hop and pop and how, you know, these standards of, standards of beauty are very important when it comes to the industry. Clay asked him, how differently do you think Beyonce's career would have been if she were a darker-skinned woman? And Matthew Knowles said, I think it would have affected her success. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with Matthew saying that because it's the truth. Like, no one is saying that Beyonce isn't talented or, you know, one of the most talented women in the music industry ever, the most hardworking. But, I mean, every privilege 
has its benefits. And I, ju I just don't know why that's so shocking for someone to say. There are things that, that men in the industry have to worry about that women don't have to. There are things that black women have to worry about in the industry that white women don't have to. There are things that darker skinned women in the industry, if y'all give them a damn chance, have to worry about that lighter skinned people don't. And I just, there's nothing wrong with acknowledging that. You cannot work to address something or erase something if you continue to act like it doesn't exist. Like, come on. <laughs> and last, but definitely not least, I want to act like these pictures don't exist. Rachel Dolza, I don't know when you tweeted this out, but you said, be your, hashtag be yourself, hashtag love yourself. Uh, and it was apparently National Selfie Day. So let me tell you something. You are not being yourself. But most importantly, we saw, or at least I did, I see how you cropped your scalp out, sis. You know you know what's going on. We all know what's going on. Um, they probably look like a Nancy Spiders pulled back on your damn scalp the way that your hair must be so, your real hair must be so thin, sis. We know why you cropped your scalp out, baby. Ain't much foundation to that house, right? So the, I know that the anchors must be slipping. Those follicles are way wasting away because that hairstyle does not belong on them thin ass hair strands and scalp. So honestly, it would be in your best interest to go ahead and give me your, give me your, give me your wig, give me your, give me your, give me your wig, give me your, give me your, give me your wig, you don't know what to do with it. Because you don't know what to do with it. But the thing is that I do just hand it over, give it to me, I'll put it in the incinerator like I'm that cyborg from One Punch Man so that we all can have a good goddamn evening.